Richard Feynman, the famous American physicist, once said, There was a time when the newspaper said that only 12 men understood the theory of relativity. I do not believe that there ever was such a time. There might have been a time when only one man did, because he was the only guy who caught on before he wrote his paper. But after people read the paper, a lot of people understood the theory of relativity in some way or other, certainly more than 12. On the other hand, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics. Even today, Feynman's warning strongly resonates in the minds of most physicists, so that in the face of the conceptual difficulties of quantum theory, the majority of them have long since lowered their arms, agreeing to submit themselves to the injunction of instrumentalism, that is, limiting themselves to only shut up and calculate. But Feynman certainly would not agree with this defeatist attitude, and if he were still alive, he probably would tell us, I have said that no one has ever understood quantum physics, not that no one will ever understand it. It is not time to lower your arms. But what are these conceptual difficulties which make it so difficult the interpretation of quantum physics? To tell the truth, there is no unanimous opinion about what would be all the conceptual difficulties that are posed by this theory. But nearly all physicists agree that the greatest difficulty, which inspired one of the broadest intellectual debates in the history of physics, still in progress, is the one of so-called measurement problem or problem of observation. In other words, quantum mechanics would pose a serious problem about a correct understanding of the so-called observer effect. According to the orthodox interpretation of this theory, no phenomenon would be such if not first observed. But to this paradoxical conclusion, known precisely as the observer effect, Albert Einstein retorted, quite rightly, the moon continues to exist undisturbed even when nobody is watching it. But to what extent can we say that our observation can create our reality? And is it really true that quantum mechanics would have reached the same conclusion as some mystical religious philosophies, which claim that the universe is a product of a consciousness? In other words, is it really true that, without the intervention of the observer consciousness, the infamous Schrodinger's cat would be condemned to remain forever simultaneously dead and alive? But how is it that a theory as advanced as quantum mechanics is not able to decide if a cat is alive or dead, or if the moon is present or absent in the sky, without having to bring into place strange psychophysical effects? Fortunately, not all physicists were discouraged by the warning of Feynman. Some have tried to really understand quantum physics and determine what happens really when an experimenter measures, that is, observes, certain physical quantities in his laboratory. Among them, we can remember Constantin Piron of the Geneva School of Physics, who has always refused to just shut up and calculate. If he were still alive, today he certainly would tell us. Contrary to Schrodinger's cat, my cats are always dead or alive, but I observe them or observe them not. And if quantum theory is unable to explain this basic fact, it means that it is quite simply an incomplete theory. The fact that quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory was noticed not only by Constantin Piron, but also by all those researchers who were seriously interested in the foundation of physics, trying to go beyond the conventional formulation of the theory and build structurally richer theoretical approaches to reality. Among them stands Diederik Erz, a student of Piron, now director of the center Leo Postel in Belgium, who in his admirable work has been able to explicitly identify those elements of reality that quantum mechanics, in its incompleteness, is not able to describe. 
Thanks to his deep analysis, it has been possible, among other things, to completely demystify the observer effect of quantum mechanics and understand that this effect has nothing to do with a psychophysical effect, but rather with a completely physical process of creation, which is inherent in some of our non-ordinary modality of observing reality. What all this means exactly cannot be explained in the narrow space-time of this video, but you will have a chance to deepen your understanding by reading the book Observer Effect – The Quantum Mystery Demystify, written by Massimiliano Sassoli de Bianchi and published by Adea Edizioni, available as an e-book on Amazon and the iBookstore. In this text, written in an educational style and addressed both to lay readers in science, but nevertheless curious and willing to get intellectually involved, and to so-called experts, you will be encouraged to give up some of your prejudice about what is or is not an observational process, on the basis of some simple and profound analogies. You will perform very special observational experiments with rubber bands, with hydraulic presses, with apples, and many other things as well. This will help you understand that the strange quantum properties are not specific only of microscopic systems and, more importantly, this will allow you to unravel the great mystery contained in quantum mechanics. This great mystery is not the understanding of the role of the conscious observer in physics measurements, but of the genuinely non-spatial nature of microscopic entities, whose behavior appears to be much more similar to that of concepts than that of the ordinary objects of our everyday reality. In other words, quoting Dietrich adds, Our reality is not contained within space. Space is a momentaneous crystallization of a theater for reality, where the motions and interaction of the microscopic material and energetic entities take place. But other entities, like quantum entities, for example, take place outside space, or, and this would be another way of saying the same thing, within a space that is not the three-dimensional Euclidean space. But now you may wonder, if it is true that quantum mechanics does not allow to infer an action of the mind of the observer on the observed systems, does this mean that the research in the field of parapsychology, for example on the controversial phenomenon of psychokinesis, would have no foundation? Does this mean that the consciousness would merely be a byproduct of the electrical activity of our brain, that is, a mere epiphenomenon, as many modern neuroscientists often say? Of course, the fact that an action of the consciousness on matter-energy is not a necessary ingredient to explain observation in quantum physics does not mean in any way that such action would necessarily be impossible. Simply, it means that we are not yet able to explain what could be a possible mechanism that would allow for its expression. That said, it is now time to conclude this video presentation. If you want to learn more about this fascinating field of study, my invitation is, of course, to read the new book by Massimiliano Sassoli de Bianchi, Observer Effect, The Quantum Mystery Demystified, Adea Edizioni, available as an e-book on Amazon and iBook Store.